Can we open with a word of prayer? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Sabbath and the fellowship that we can have and the peace that you give us and the truths that you have been unfolding this past week and the work of your Holy Spirit upon our hearts and the conviction of our sins. We pray for one another, Lord. You know that we live in difficult times and you know our human nature, our frame. And we are weak and we need you. And so we ask, Lord, now for your strength, for your understanding, for your wisdom. As we open your word together, may your Holy Spirit speak to us and may it change us from the inside out. Thank you for all the things that you are doing. And we ask for your continued presence in our lives. Be with us now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, happy Sabbath again, Sabbath evening here. I know it's around the world. There's different places, different times. And some of you will be watching this Sunday morning or sometime after that. Now, we have been studying the line of the judges. And in the line of the judges, we have the line of Samson. Now, we had looked at Manoah uh, yesterday evening. And um, we're going to look at Samson. Now, with Samson, we had lots of different lines. And it has been the line that I've had the most difficulty with, as I've said. And I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that it's something that I'm not as certain about. Now, the way mark in the line of the judges. In the line of the judges, we have at 9-11, the first angel arrives. It's formalized, and that's going to be Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar that represent that. And then we had um, October 13th, 2018 to September 7th, 2019, that 329 days, which is Deborah and Barak. And then we had 11-9, that empowerment of the first angel was Gideon. Now, uh, Abimelech and Jotham uh, paralleled the message of Samuel Snow. So it proceeds, uh, it, it, it happens after the empowerment of the first message, so after 1840 in Millerite history, and, and, and continues before the midnight way mark. So July 18, 2020 is rep- representing April 19th, that's Tola and Jair, and the method, mes- message of Jotham continues after that. And so it's in that history. And then we have Jephthah is December 6th, 2020. That's the formalization of the second angel's message. December 25th, 2021 is its empowerment. That's Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon. And now we have Samson. We looked at Manoah. Manoah was a zoom into the first way mark in the line of Manoah, or in the line of Samson. And Manoah goes all the way back uh, to November 9th, 1989, and brings us to December 25th, 2021. But also, uh, there's this period of 40 years, which we connected with July 18, 2030, as a symbol. And so we know that Samson, his work, continues uh, through this history. So the line of Manoah uh, covers um, from the birth of of Samson all the way to his death, all the way to the fourth angel arriving. So it's, it's going to cover all that history, the message to Manoah and his wife, uh, the, the period from November 9th, 2019 to December 25th, 2021, which is Samson's birth, and then it's going to go to the fourth angel arriving that is Samson's death. And so Samson's death itself is a line that is, that's the fourth angel arriving. So we, we have all of this complexity in these lines, and um, really what we're going to look at, even when we deal with Samson's death, um, that's going to be tomorrow, that's what I call an unfinished line, Um, so, so we have all of these lines. Now, so this is a line, I think, that I say it's a line in progress, 
that is our progress of understanding it, but also we are in the midst of this way mark. We're in the midst of January 11th, 2023. We're in 2023. And so it's difficult to look at a line that is talking about what's happening right now. And, and one of the things, you know, we had put together this camp meeting. And initially, you know, we had invited uh, people from the Canadian group because they live here in Canada. Many of them don't live too far away from here. And, <clears throat> you know, we asked them what time they wanted to come to the camp meeting, what would be a good time. We didn't get a lot of feedback. Some people said, well, you know, that other time you picked wouldn't be good. But we have nobody really from the Canadian group here. We've had a couple of people that have been here briefly, but besides myself and my wife Heidi, everyone else has come here from somewhere else. Stephen from Ireland and Aran and Dwight and, and Jenny coming from the United States. And so we don't have all these people that should be here to be here. Now, when I say that they should be here, based upon the lines, they should be here, right? Because we're in 2023. Now, that could be seem like a little bit arrogant. I set up a camp meeting. I expect everybody to be here. Who are you to say that we should be there? But it's not me. It's these lines. And these lines have given us an objective measure of where we are. So I'm not, I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad. I'm not trying to tell everybody that I'm right and you're wrong. But I'm just saying that God wants to do something and we're resisting. Right? He wants to give us light and we don't seem that interested in getting together to find out what that light is. Now, fair, some people will be watching on YouTube. Right? They may watch it live. They may watch it later. Right? So they may be watching it as we're doing these meetings. They may watch it later. But it, to me, it seems very difficult uh, to take the position that what God has given us here isn't needed for everyone. You understand what I'm saying? And, and I'm not personally disappointed. You know, I'm not like, oh, I wish a bunch of people were here so I could feed my ego or anything like that. I'm just saying I'm disappointed for people who had an opportunity that I believe that this message is addressing. And, and it has to happen one way or the other. That is, God has to somehow work in our lives in a way that our pride, whatever it is that's hindering us from receiving light, is set aside. And I don't know how that's going to happen. It's not my work. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. But I do know that what we've had poured out for us at this camp meeting is an amazing amount of light and we can't you could not argue against it right i don't see how anyone can argue against what stephen has presented here with the altar or what we have found dealing with uh, the 30 years in the story of jephthah i mean almost nothing that we have done we know that there are some little details here and there that we don't quite know exactly if we're correct or where they fit or how to interpret them. But we can't say, you know, this is easy to tear apart. There's all kinds of problems. There isn't, right? This is something that is very, very clear. So when we're looking at this line of Samson, it's addressing the issues that are in the movement at the present time. And my understanding of these is not something that I created because I want to. It's because this is what the lines have told us. And so when we look at this line of Samson, it's going to be telling us about things that are right here, right now. And so I think we need to examine them. Now, 
we have lots of different lines in Samson's. I put here we have four lines for Samson. I mean, because we have Samson, we can look at chapter 13, we could look at chapter 14, we could look at chapter 15, we could look at chapter 16. So we could take each of those chapters as a line if we wanted to. Manas Manoah, we took from chapter 13. And we drew a lot more lines than what I put here in the notes. I just wanted to simplify them. I didn't want to go through everything. But here we're going to have a line of Samson and a line we call Samson and Delilah. Now really, as I look through this Samson and Delilah line, I might name it something different. I might name it, um, uh, instead of uh, Samson and Delilah, I'd maybe call it uh, Samson's two women or something like that. Because you're going to have the first one um, that he sees, this, this harlot, right? And then you're going to have Delilah, and, and this is sort of chapter 16, right? Now, the line of Samson that we have, uh, it's going to cover uh, chapter 13, 14, and 15. Really, it's just going to, the darkness is going to be chapter 13, the end of chapter 13, the birth of Samson. So it, it's kind of two chapters, and those are going to be dealing with um, that marriage that he has, right? So... So there's lots of different things in here. It's going to have this riddle. It's going to have the, the lion roaring, the honey from the lion, uh, the 300 foxes. All those things are going to be in what we call the Samson line. And I would love to have lots of people here going through this line, struggling with us all together, saying, what is this telling to us, right? right. I wouldn't want to say, here is what it's telling you. Right? Because that's not really my place. Because I'm just one of us. I'm, I'm not something different from us. We're all a part of this movement. And I want to know what this is telling us. And I would like to have all of the minds that God has brought into this movement struggling over these things and trying to understand them. So with this line, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay out what we have seen but I don't think that's all that there is to see, right? And we're going to address this tomorrow, right? We're going to look at this unfinished line. But here today, we're looking at what we call the line of Samson. Now, we have a period of darkness that precedes his birth. And this relates to the Philistine oppression. The Philistine oppression, as we understood from Stephen's chronology that he has worked out, is it begins at the time or just shortly before Samson's birth. So they're being oppressed by the Philistines. And of course, Samson, in order to be their deliverer, he has to be born first, then he has to grow up, right? So he's going to be growing up, and when he's a teenager, you know, he's going to begin to judge them, right? He's not going to be in his 20s. He's going to be in his teens somewhere. Um, and then he's going to die shortly before that 40 years of Philistine oppression ends. So he has, he has a short time, and he's going to begin to deliver Israel. Right? His, his work is not going to accomplish that. Now we mark his birth at 9-11 because when we look at Samson, one of the things we see about Samson is that he illustrates this whole line of the judges that we have from 9-11 uh, to uh, 20, 23, right? So we've, we have that line. That's the line of the judges. And Samson is a um, he is in the line of judges uh, just going back here because I always forget exactly he's going to be January 11th 2023 so he's going to be that third angel arriving uh, but we have Samson and Delilah which is going to be the fourth angel arriving which is the repeat of history and so Samson being that third angel he's going to also connect because the third angel is joined by the fourth angel, right? So, so we can see that Samson is going to be connected to that history that's still future. And so he's in this time of Philistine oppression. And his birth mark is marked at 9-11. There's an increase of knowledge, 1325 to 14-4. So if we 
Look there, it says, And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Eshtaol. And we said that this is this message that's going to be moving at 9-11 in that area in Arkansas, right? So, um, no, it's going to start there. We, we're going to know, because ozone, that first camp meeting there, is in Arkansas in 2004, right? And, and what is it about the name Arkansas, Stephen? Well, I really don't know. The Ark can be saw. <laughs> and, and Arkansas. The Ark can be saw. The, 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 the Ark is where, Arkansas is where the Ark can be saw. Yeah, yeah, which is bad grammar, but I understand <laughs> what you mean. Yeah, the ark is where the ark can be saw. You know, you can see it in Arkansas, right? So we know that that there is this message about the ark, and we can see that Arkansas has that message. And it, and it's a pun, but I think it's a symbol, right? And and so we relate that to Arkansas, and we're going to have that camp meeting. In that increase of knowledge, you're going to have. All of these things happening, developing from 2004. So these are going to be the increase of knowledge. Now, we also have this symbol of this lion roaring, right? That's going to be verse 5. And so we mark the lion roaring at 11.9, but we also mark the lion roaring at 9.11, right? Because what is the lion roaring? What is he doing? This isn't Satan. In this case, he's announcing, well, this is the line of the tribe of Judah. He's unfolding prophecy. This is the book of Daniel is now open again with the prophecies that were fulfilled at 9-11. And we know that 9-11 and 11-9 are connected um, through this symbol because they're, they're the same symbol, right? We came to understand that. So this is the increase of knowledge between there, but the lion roars at 11.9, but 11.9 is really 9.11, right? Because we put the lion roaring at 9.11, we put it at 11.9. And it's 62 times 107 days between those two dates. That symbolizes the 10th day of the seventh month, and the 62 represents that middle part of the, week of the, the 70 weeks, that 434 years. And we also know that relates to Revelation 10, verse 3, right? And so that has to do with Millerite history. And is Millerite history connected to our history? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Because we know, when we get there, in Revelation chapter 10, when we look at that, those verses... It says, and, I, and so this is going to be Christ, right? He's going to go back to Daniel chapter 12. The symbol, what we see in Daniel chapter 12 is going to be repeated in Daniel chapter 10. In Daniel chapter 12, what's sealed up? Book. Well, the book of Daniel, right? Okay, and in Daniel chapter 10, that book's going to be unsealed, right? And we see this vision, which is very similar to Daniel chapter 12. You know, he's going to have in his hand now a little book open, not a book sealed, in verse 10. And he sets his right foot upon the sea and his left foot upon the earth and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. And when he cried, seven thunders utter their voices. So this is Millerite history, but this is our history. Right? So we know that. And the seven thunders, they're unsealed in our history. They're sealed up in Millerite history. Ellen White tells us this very plainly. So we know that this lion roaring has to do with the understanding of prophecy from 9-11 to 11-9. I hate to have to erase this here, but I'm going to anyway. <clears throat> so, so this history... 
um, I think is an extremely important insight that we had in understanding the lines. That is, the second angel, the mighty angel of Revelation 18, coming down at 9-11, really comes down at 11-9. But he begins to come down at 9-11. So we have here 9-11, and we have uh, this lion, Right? And that's going to be the first angel arriving. And then you're going to have uh, the f first angel formalized. And that's going to be 11-9. So we've, we've run into this 9-11, 11-9. And you're going to have the lion here as well. Right? So this lion roars at 11-9. But he's also roared at 9-11. This is the same way, Mark. When Jeff was looking at 9-11 as the second angel arriving, we know that Judges is really a zooming into that second angel arriving. And that second angel arriving arrives from 9-11 to 11-9. That is, in our history, this is a repeat or a tip type, but it's, it's zooming into that Sunday law. So it's repeating the Sunday law ahead of time, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's showing us and illustrating the Sunday law. <clears throat> Now, we have the honey from the lion, right, in the story of Samson. We're not going to read all of this, but we could. But we have this honey from the lion, and that's going to be uh, verses 7 to 9, right? So in chapter, um, fifth, chapter 14 here, um, and he went down and he talked with a woman. She pleased Samson well, and after a time he returned to take her, and he... so. Remember, he had killed this lion, right? The spirit of the Lord had come upon him and he had rent this lion and he didn't tell anybody about it, right? So now when he's going back down, he turned to aside to see the carcass of the lion and behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. He took thereof in his hands and went on eating. Now we know when you eat honey, what happens? Sweet in the mouth. Yeah, it's going to be sweet in your mouth. And your eyes are going to be enlightened, right? Jonathan's going to eat that honey, right? So this is light that's given to, to us, right, in this message. And this we're going to mark at July 18, 2020. So that's going to be the formalization over here, and this is going to be the empowerment. So July 18, 2020. And this is the honey. Right? And that's 252 days between those two dates. <clears throat> One tenth of a 2520. So we have this honey from the lion. But he's not going to tell anyone. And then there's going to be this riddle. And this riddle is going to be 525 days later. And that's going to be December 25th. 2021. And this is the riddle. Right? And this is going to be the second angel arriving. So we know we have the 777 days here. This is in our line. But this, this riddle, we know that there's a riddle at, at December 25th, 2021. Colin's going to present the riddle. And he calls it the riddle, right? Okay, this is a riddle. You know, there's seven heads, five are fallen, one is, and all those things from Revelation 17. Now, he also connects that with Daniel chapter 3, the golden image from head to toe, and to Daniel chapter 11, verses 1 to 4, right? So he's going to say, you know, with Alexander coming in, Alexander is going to be representing the United States, and which I agree with him because the United States is conquered by Greece. We have some differences in how we understand these things. I don't think either of us understand it completely. I don't think this movement yet understands what God gave us on December 25th, 2021. But the group has not been willing to examine it as a group. They say, just let Colin present what he thinks. 
And we haven't seen, in, in all that I've seen in these studies, anybody really digging into it other than Colin in his own way. But he's missing pieces of the puzzle. And so I visited him. I've talked to him on the phone. I keep telling him, we need to study this together. You should be here at the camp meeting. We sh you should be presenting. We should be studying together. That's my view. I know that's a hard thing to say, but that's what I believe. I believe that we should follow the counsel given in the spirit of prophecy that we need to study together. That studying separately and taking sides isn't productive because we don't, all, each of us does not have all of the light. I definitely don't have all of the light and I don't have all of the answers, right? So we have this happen. We have Colin present this, this study and he has drawn conclusions which I disagree with and not because I think he's a bad person. I just think that he hasn't taken the time to look at everything and there's a lot of things to look at. And we need each one of us studying these things. So we have this second angel arriving after the 525 days. And this is going to be formalized 49 daters, days later with Adilio's presentation. Now, we get the symbol here because we're going to have this wheat harvest. This is chapter 15, verse 1. And, and we're going to have the symbols of the wheat harvest or Pentecost is going to be symbolized here. But So Adilio is going to present on February 12th, 2022. He's going to present the 1629. So this is about the mandates, but this is the number that he presents. And this number relates to other symbols within our movement. It's sort of like a key, Right? It, it unlocks other numbers. And I think it's related to this riddle in ways that we haven't yet addressed. Now, one of the things that he did in this study, though, that has helped us is he's recognized that things like this, how many hours are there in 780 days, for instance? I'm only at 1720, right? Right? So the, things like this came out of his study where we could just take, we know if we multiply 78 by 24, we get 1872. But 780 by 24, uh, we get 1870. So we get this, this number. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Looks correct to me. And, and so this is the second angel being formalized. And we have this symbol of seven weeks. Right? That's the seven weeks to Pentecost. So that happens in there, the 49 days. Uh, just a point. Uh, yeah. Methuselah lived till 969. Yeah. And then you had the closed door take place in the, uh, the flood. Okay, so 1629 minus 969 is 660. So you oh. maybe see like a... 666 symbol almost. There. Okay, yeah. 660 does represent uh, 6666 six, six as well. Yes. Okay. So there's, there's lots of symbols here. There's lots of things with that 1629 number. Uh, we found that it, it connected as a span of time um, from uh, when we had time setting in the movement to that Thanksgiving in 2022. So... So those things are important, and it's on this line as well. <clears throat> because that's the third message that arrives, or, or the second angel is empowered, pardon me, that's going to be uh, the next one. So the second angel, its empowerment happens after the failure of Colin's prediction. So he does make a prediction regarding the, the twenty. Uh, 22 midterm election. And so he says it was a suggestion that it might happen this way. But there was a time constraint based on how he presented his study that, that this needs to happen. So 
after that failed prediction on November 22nd, which is, uh, pardon me, 24th. It's an anniversary of November 22nd, 2018. That is, it's a Thanksgiving. And in 2018, four years earlier, we had this uh, a prediction regarding Thanksgiving, which showed that we can't make predictions. So we're going to have this date here, November 24th, 2022. And this is going to be the symbol here is the 2688, right? So we looked at this. This is going to come back connect back to when time setting came into this movement, 1,629 days. So it uses this symbol to confirm this date, but also it gives us this new number, and this number is IRS form number 2688, an application for the additional extension of time to file your taxes, right? Here, we can see that this is this movement being told that you're making an application for extra time. You should have done something now, but you're going to have time to do it later. You're, you're making an application. The deadline's coming up for your taxes, so to speak, and, but you can fill out this form. And that form, this is over here. So this is the second angel empowered. We're going to have the third angel arrive here and the fourth angel here. And that's going to connect to this date, April 5th, 2030, which we're going to deal with after this in more detail. It's going to be the last study today. So this is 2,688 days. And we already have this date. And so when we had this date and we had the 1629 and this, well, then we had an understanding of what God was doing. He's giving us time to sort through these things. Now, my view was, well, we should have this camp meeting. The camp meeting should be part of that uh, uh, because it seems to me to make sense that that's what we would want. But what we end up having as this third angel arriving in this line is two different dates. This is going to be December 25th, 2022. And this is going to be January 11th, 2023. And the 22 and the 23, those remind me of, of Tola and Jair, but it doesn't matter right now. What we know is that this date is the first day of the 10th month, right? And this date symbolically is the first day of the 10th month, right? So this is, from this date, it's going to be 88 months to this date. It's going to be 2,640 days. That is, I'm just taking the 88 days from the first day of the 10th month. Just put it down here. First day, 10th month to the first day, first month. And that is going to be in the story of Ezra. That's the divorce, right? Now, we're not divorcing each other. We're supposed to divorce the strange wives, which is a method of study that has infected this movement all through its history. It's part of that Philistine oppression. And it's, it's clouded our minds to understand how God wants to wants us to understand his word, it's how, it, how his word changes our character and that just knowing about things isn't going to change our character. We need to have those things do a work upon us, right? So the strange wives need to be removed. So that's the divorce. That's the 88 days from the first day of the first month or first day of the 10th month to the first day of the first month. Now, we're not saying... That's how much that time is going to be when the divorce occurs, right? We're just saying it's a symbol. So it's telling us about right now. It's not telling us about then. And so both of these represent this date. This one because it literally is the first day of the 10th month. And this one because of its distance to this date, making it 
a symbol of the first day of the tenth month. Okay? So this is the line of Samson. And, and we, we work through how these symbols come about. We know that there's also uh, that we can take 30, 30, 30, right? Because there's going to be those, uh, his 30s groomsmen, right? They have the riddle. Um, you know, he's going to be uh, bothered by Delilah. She's going to tell the riddle to the 30 groomsmen, right? So there's going to be 30 groomsmen, groomsmen. 30 Philistines who get killed and 30 changes of raiment. And you could take this as 30, 30, 30. That would be three months, right? And we can count the three months from December 25th, 2022 as well, right? So when you do uh, 30, 30, 30, um, that's going to be uh, 90. And instead of my, multiplying it by... By that, you multiply it by 29.530587. That's the length of a month. So you have 90 months. And when you do that, just to make sure that I'm doing this right, you end up with an extra number of days. And that number of days is how many days is it from December 25th to January 11th? From December 25th to January 1st is how many days? days. Seven days, right? Seven days inclusive. No, not inclusive. Cardinal days, right? It's a week. You know, if December if December 25th is on a Saturday, January 1st is on a Saturday, right? So it's a week, and then you have. 10 more days. So that's 17 days. And if you multiply 90 by this, you get this number plus 17 days. Right? So that gives you that same date. So this is pretty amazing in and of itself that we have two different dates that represent the first day of the 10th month. And both of them, if we count one as 88 days and multiply it by a prophetic month, we get the span for this date. And if we count it as 30, 30, 30, which we get from the story of Samson, right, 90 days, and we multiply it as actual lunar months, then we will also end up with this date, right? So two different two witnesses in that, that symbol. <clears throat> now, there was lots of symbols in this story of Samson, which, which I find very interesting. I mean, in Samson and Delilah, um, when we look at that story, uh, we're going to find that um, we have Samson, and Samson's name is um, 8123, right? And Delilah is 1807, right? So Delilah represents a symbol for July 18. And Samson has this name, uh, 8123. Now, where is Delilah from? Okay, so the Valley of Sorek. And when you look up Sorek, you'll find that it actually has two Hebrew numbers. And one of them is 8231, right? It's just an iteration of that. The other one is 7796. And if you subtract them, you get 525. Right? So we get this 525-day this span. Right? And that's going to, of course, when we, when we go through this line of Samson and Delilah, it's going to be a zoom into this um, fourth angel arriving, that April 5th, 2030 date. And we know that Samson, he's going to get his hair cut off, right? And the name Samson, if you do the gematria of Samson, just the simple gematria, it's going to be 81, and if you do the reverse gematria, it's also going to be 81. And I've never seen that before. I'm sure it can happen probably occasionally. I'm not sure what statistically how often it would happen with a name. But the fact that it's the same both ways is interesting. And if we take the number 8181 in Hebrew, that's the word they use for hair, for his hair that's going to be cut off. 
right? So, so that symbol of Samson relates to the Hebrew number of his hair. Now, when we do the line of Samson to Delilah, it's going to start on December 25th, 2021, and I'm not going to draw it. Um, but it's going to place here, in the second angel arriving, the invitation to these camp meetings, to the studies, and to this camp meeting itself. This camp meeting is started on July 24th, 2023. And that's going to be an empowerment of the second angel, which began on December 25th, 2022. The second invitation, right? That's for the line simply presented. And it's going to be uh, 16 verse 6, which is a 6 is F and 1, and 1 is A. So it's FFA backwards. And, and that's what this camp meeting is about. It's on the lines. Now we can say, well, you put it there. Doesn't mean anything to me. I don't even understand any of the stuff that you're doing anyway. It's just a bunch of nonsense, right? You could say that. But we have so many witnesses that what we're doing is valid that we need to think about it. Now, even uh, Samson's name, 8123, it's, um, it's the uh, 1022nd prime number, right? So that's a symbol for October 22, 1022, which is the 187th day of the year in 1844. So we have, again, that July 18 symbol showing up. And then we have, um, on this line, we put October 8th, 2030, the 10th day of the seventh month. So we're using that symbol there, which is a symbol of the Sunday law. And then we have the Sunday law itself. We're going to have a Sunday law sometime in the future. That's in the future. We don't know when it is. But this is what we have done. Right? We've taken this story... We've gone through meticulously through the scriptures. We've invited people to be parts of these, part of this study. We, we, we don't feel that we're the ones like authorized. We're not, you know, we're not in charge of anything. We're just studying, but we're part of this movement, and so is everyone else who study this message. And everybody has a part to play, and we know that. A lot of what's going on is envy, jealousy, hurt feelings, rumors, gossip, drama, all of those things that are existing, division that shouldn't be existing in this movement. And instead of us looking at ourselves and saying, what is it that I have done to contribute, we tend to try to say it's somebody else's problem. And when I say that, I'm including me in that. I'm not saying you guys are the problem. I'm saying that we all are the problem. We need to recognize that this light that God has given us is not something just to tickle our intellect. It is meant to waken us up to the need that we have to set aside whatever it is, pride, I don't know, fear of light, I don't know, but something that's hindering us from looking at the truth and accomplishing God's work. So there's all of these things. Now, we also, when we looked at Samson, we had another line. Now, this is the line of the three tests. And this I found extremely interesting when we came up with this line. Now, the line of the three tests, so I'm going to erase this line and try to draw this one I only have about 15 minutes, right? If I remember correctly. <clears throat> okay, so, so we have this line of these tests. And, and what we have simply done is these tests are the different um, means that Samson says by which he would lose his power when Delilah... Um, you know, basically nags him to say, you know, what is, what is the source of your strength, right? And he's going to say, if you tie me with seven green withs, these are, are bowstrings that have never been dried. You know, I shall be weak as any other man. And then there's the new ropes. If they tie me with new ropes that have never been used, you know, I'll be weak as other men. And if you put my, my hair, if you 
the seven locks that I have and you weave them in a loom, um, then I shall be weak as other men. And each one of these, I mean, Samson is just mocking Delilah. And it's, it's one of those stories we know because it's, you know, it, it's something that, well, it's very visual. And, you know, you can draw it out for kids and kids can think it's humorous and, and even adults think it's humorous. But it's not. It's something quite serious. But we can see that Samson, Sunshine, he's, he is a message that is not reflecting Christ's character, but he still is going to deliver them or begin to deliver them from the Philistines. <clears throat> now, the darkness here, when we look at this line of the tests, we relate to to what? So we have these tests. So Samson gets a Nazar he becomes a Nazarite. Okay? And his parents are given instruction and his wife is barren. And we're saying that what needs to happen is we need to reflect Christ's character. Because if the wife is barren, what does that mean about the church? It doesn't have Christ's character. It's barren of Christ. Christ needs to be born in the church. And Samson is a type of Christ. But he's not the type of Christ, you know, that we would want. We want to have a type of Christ that points to his goodness. It points to the humanity of Christ, the nature that you and I have, that Christ is going to overcome. Right? right. So, so this barrenness has to do with our character. And to, to address that, God gives us July 18, 2020. Because at July 18, 2020, do we have the character of Christ? No. We do not. Do we think we do? Yes. Yes. We think that we're ready for what it, we think is going to come upon the world, and we're not. And so we have this increase of knowledge about the lack of character, and that's going to be demonstrated on December 6th, 2020. And, um, and I have here five, this is going to be this um, money that's going to be offered to Delilah, right? This is going to be that five times 220, which is 1,100 pieces of silver. That's dealing with the increase of knowledge, that's 16 verse 5. So 16 verse 4 is this time of the end. Um, and then we're going to have, uh, and so you should look at that verse. 16 verse 4 is going to be, and it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sork whose name was Delilah. So it's taking us all the way to this history um, where we are presently. And so that's going to be July... 18th, and then we have December 6th. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him, right? And they're going to offer 1,100 pieces of silver. And then Samson is going to be pestered by Delilah in verse 6. Delilah said unto Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. Right? So he's just going to give her a story. And that's going to be the first test. Now, the seven green widths, the sum of that is 193. The reverse is 391. And that's a symbol, as we know. And um, this is going to be the number of days, I believe. I'm not sure. But it goes to October 2nd, 2021. That's what I think it's going to be. But we're going to have uh, the 16th day of the first month in 21. This is going to be um, where I write a paper. So we go here, the 16th day of the first month in 21. That's obviously January uh, 16th. I'm going to write a paper called Three Days. 
So that paper called Three Days is going to address what happened here. And this is, of course, this is the first angel arriving, the first angel formalized, and the first angel empowered. And then we're going to have October 2nd. So this becomes a conflict in the movement that I believe is related to what happened with FFA. And that, that conflict then, um, July, I don't think that's right. I'm not sure the number of days between here and here. Um, if somebody can figure that out. Yeah, that's not going to be 391. So I'm not sure why I have 391 here. And then we have uh, from here to here, though, we're going to have all the way here to this way, Mark, 161 days. And we're going to see that that represents um, uh, November 9th and, and some of the other symbols, right? So 9-11, et cetera. And this also represents the 16th day of the first month, and that's going to connect to the 16th day of the first month. So the 16th day of the first month here, you have 161 days here. And that brings you to uh, December 25th, 2021. Right? And then we have October 8th. This is going to be when it's confirmed. They don't want me teaching anymore. And then October 22, this is going to be, um, I can't remember this date, in 2021. I'm not sure what happened on that date. I didn't, I probably have it written down. I should look at it. It's 441 from July 18 to October 2, 2021. So this is 441? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Which is 63 weeks. Right? Okay. <clears throat> so that's an important symbol. Um, so there was a lot of symbols here. And when I wrote this out, I, I dealt with all these different symbols. So we have all kinds. I have it here. It says all kinds of symbols. Um, but I need to find this. So the second message. Um, and then we have... So we had this controversy that happened over uh, the interpretation of Revelation 18, verse 23, and, and Leviticus 18, 23. And I wrote a paper. The paper I wrote in response was entitled Amalgamation Transhumanism 666 and the mRNA Vaccine. So that was one of the, um, the issues here with October 2nd. So that's when this paper was written. So this is going to be, uh, Steve, it's going to give me, yep, you can't teach. And then this is going to be the paper. So this all relates to this second angel. So this is the, the second angel's message here. Right, and then we have the third angel arrive here. So I know it's a lot of information here, but... The main message I'm trying to, to lay out here is that this is stuff that we, this is the problem that we are in right now. And the question is, what are we supposed to do about it? Well, we know we have to address the problems in our own lives. We have to address the issues in our own characters. Because I don't have any control over what anyone else does. I only have control over what I do. But I can tell people that God is giving us a lot of light and I think that we need to look at this together and we need to solve the problems that we have with each other and we need to be studying together. We need to be spending time together. We need to be spending time on our knees together. We need to be searching for light together because we're not enemies. And if we are enemies, then... We're enemies of God, right? right? Because this is about God's work. So this is the problem. This is what we have to solve. Now, we have this date here, July 18, 2030. Again, a symbolic date. 
that showed up in the line of Samson. And this line, this date, this is the haircut, right? This is where we depend upon Christ. At least the way that I look at it. We have no strength. We need to understand that we are powerless without God. We can't affect God's work without God. And we need to, when I look at Samson, what I see is our human nature coming to its extremity and losing in that battle. But he's a type of Christ. Because he's going to be victorious, right? This message that is affecting us is going to be victorious over human nature. So that's what has to be done. So these, these messages are not something to tickle our intellect. They are fascinating things, but God gave them to us for a reason. And so we need to understand them. So I again invite people to study these messages that God has given us. Set aside your feelings about people. We, we said at the beginning, it's, maybe we, we don't like somebody's voice or we don't like their personality. But that doesn't matter. The question we have to ask is, is something true? And to know whether it's true or not, we have to go to the scriptures. We may have all built up all kinds of arguments of what we think about other people and why we shouldn't listen to them. But that's not of God. So, can you join me in prayer? Mm-hmm. Dear Father in heaven, we are grateful. We are grateful for everything that you are doing. We are grateful for your mercy towards us as sinners. We are grateful that you have given us light. We are grateful for the people that you have given light to, the people around us, the people that we call friends, and even some that we don't put, we're not particularly fond of as friends. But we're grateful for the light that you give them. And we're grateful for the light that you've poured out at this camp meeting. Yet our heart aches because we know that there are many who would rejoice in this light and we feel that we've done things that have hindered them, hindered them from entering in and looking at this light. And we know that you forgive us. You know that we're sorry for words that we've said and things that we've done. And so we ask, Lord, that uh, your forgiveness can also be given to them for the things they've done and said that have hindered them from looking at this light as well. We know that not one person is to blame, that we all all are to blame. And so I ask, Lord, that you can help us to see our part in these things. We know that this message is, is amazing beyond measure. And yet, how can we even begin to understand it? We know, Lord, only through thy spirit. That not intellect alone, not even study and hard work alone can help us to understand these things. Only your Holy Spirit speaking to our hearts and us responding in obedience. So, we all ask for forgiveness. We pray that you can forgive others and that you can use us. Even though we're defective, we know, Lord, that you are powerful. So be with each person who watches these videos. Help them in their struggle. Help them to accomplish the work that you put before them each day. And help us, Lord, to become united in Christ that his prayer may be answered. And we pray this and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.